Welcome back folks. It's Friday morning. Just got back from work. A few things to do. Kind of a busy Friday. Uh, Mike is going to take the orange and purple sled here, the Terminator. He's going to take that up to Ocano and do uh, Wampa Trucks tonight. Um, he's got all three sleds out tonight. We're going to be taking Old Yeller. This is my first sled. This one's a little bit different than the other two and when we get farther along I'll explain some of the differences to you. But I've got a guy coming tonight to train him. It'll be his first time running the sled. There's a couple dates this year where I need some extra help. So I'm trying to train another guy. It's always nice to have some extra guys for backup in case somebody needs to take a day off or something happens. So he's going to ride along tonight. Um, we've got two sleds in Greenleaf for a pull. This one will most likely be doing farm type tractors. So that's a good learning experience for your first time getting used to things, how to operate the sled. So um, I'm going to be working with him, training him. And then Scott's coming up with the red sled to do NEW Motorsports stuff. Uh, I think they got diesel trucks. Um, there are five tractor classes, I believe they have all of them there. So. I uh, finished up servicing Old Yeller last night. Everything checks all good, nothing too crazy. Fix a couple minor things, but it's pretty dirty, so I'm gonna back her outside and take the power washer to it quick and at least get some of the bird crap and stuff off. Then we'll get the hitch on it, get her hooked up to the Red Kenworth here, move some weights around. I gotta take a scale and two of these skid steer rakes. So I'll unload that one there. And this scraper Mike doesn't need to take with. Wampa has their own, so we'll unload that. And this thing should be ready to go. Fueled it up yesterday. Boy, fuel's getting expensive. The truck's gonna need it. That one's gonna hurt. So, not sure how much footage I'll get tonight, being I'm training a new guy, but I'll try and get some, maybe some different angles. If I can get out of the sled for a while, let him on his own. Um, I like to do that. I, I, feel if I'm sitting next to them, I make them nervous, so I always like to f just get out and let them figure it out on their own, kind of. So, we'll see how the day goes, we'll get some more footage. So the first thing that's different on this sled is, it's got a combine cab so the door opens the wrong way. So you gotta go past the door to get in. But combine cabs are easier to find. This, this sled didn't have the cab when I first bought it. Um, this will be my ninth year running this sled and I made some improvements to it. Oh, it's got to be four or five years ago already. But one of them was I added this cab. This one, the controls are a little bit different than the other ones. This one uses a hydrostat to run the box, to bring the box back. Whereas the other one uses the Allison transmission for driving and for bringing the box back. This one's got an Allison also, but as strictly used just for driving the sled back and forth. Um, that This one does not use a Nexon air clutch. This has actually got a clutch lever here you have to pull in, in gear. So a couple differences, but nothing too crazy. Another thing that's different, this one actually has regular steering where the other ones have electrical or hydraulic, or it's just switches. A lot of times in my videos you'll hear a clicking while I'm backing up. Well, that's me pushing the switch to turn my wheels for steering. I don't know if I'm going to make her.
gave us some more room. This week we can show you is we got water run to the new shop. I got a sink out there. Wash our hands and stuff, and I do got a hose connection. I could run the power washer out of there too, but for now we'll do it like we've always done. There, quick wash job, done. Something else I can show you is like, I own three, three of these sleds. This is the oldest one, but all three of them have a different style hitch that you put on to tow them down the road. This one pulls off the regular fifth wheel, like a semi, but it has to be lifted on and off with a loader of some kind. You have to have a loader at the pull. When I get there, they have to lift the hitch off for me and then put it back on before I go home. Which isn't a big deal because they have to have something there to move the scale and and the weights and stuff anyways. So I am going to attempt to uh, do this by myself. It is a pain in the butt by yourself. If you got another person to help you want to run the loader and want to hold on to the hitch, it's a really pretty simple. Like I said, if you have two people, it's a lot easier, but someone to hold it and get it lined up, someone to drive the tractor, it's actually really pretty easy. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get that semi out, and uh, we're gonna put the weights I got in the barn on the semi. So these are the weights. Um, these are 12 inch square tubing, and they're full of lead. These big ones are 34 inches long, and they make not quite 2,000 pounds. And then I have, I have 22 of them. I got 10 in each sled and then I got two here yet. Um, and then I have eight of these half ones. There's six here and there's two in the back of the tractor actually. But I did these halves like this because these 34 inch long ones, they kind of standard for what you call your level eight sleds, like the two new ones. Well, them won't fit in my old sled. And I had a bunch of mixed match weights. So I remelted lead and I put them in these halves because these halves I can use on the old sled or I can use these on the new sleds if need be so that's why I did that um here's some I got some lead ingots here in case I want to make some more and then this is lead joints from old lead pipe and then I use a lot of lead water pipe that stuff really works good but uh just use a propane torch here and I melt them and fill them 12 inch tubes full and then weld ends weld ends on them and the kids painted them so if Tracy was here make it a lot easier she could hook the chain and unhook the chain for me help me get them on a truck but she's working this morning so we'll try and get it done by myself
we're back here inside the old yellow sled. Uh, this is probably my favorite part with this sled and this hitch. It's really pretty nice for loading up. I got a ramp between the frame rails. I don't know if you guys can see that way up there, but basically I can just drive this thing. when I run the box all the way ahead. It gets pinned all the way ahead. The other two sleds, the box rides above the axles. But this one, the way it's designed and it's a little heavier, you run the box all the way up to the front. Like that. Set your parking brake. Shut everything off. We'll go put drop a pin in on that box and then we're ready to go down the road. So, um, yeah, we just hooked the hoses up, and we pretty much be ready to go. I got to load the scale up. The scale sitting over there in the corner of that yellow platform. We're going to set that on top of here, on top of the frame, and then two of them skid steer rakes. There's one over there, and then one I got to unload. I got to unload that sled. Yeah. So I'm probably going to take lunch break, and we'll catch back up with you guys later today. Well, we're back from lunch. Mike's here already. And he's off full panel. So here's a little piece of information that a lot of pullers probably don't know. A sled guys tend to bring home a souvenir from every pull we go to. Especially if it's wet, heavy clay like this. It sticks to the bottom of the pan. And then we bring it home and it dries out and it falls off. Thankfully now, I got a shop and it falls off and it's a little bit easier to clean up. Otherwise it used to fall off out in the yard out here, in the gravel, and if I didn't clean it up right away and it would rain, it would turn to mud, then the dog would walk in it, bring it in the house, in the bed, make a mess of everything. So yeah, another thing to be fortunate that I got a shop now, I can scoop it up a little easier. So here we are, Greenleaf, Wisconsin, Wrightstown FFA, alumni and supporters fundraiser. We're in the old yellow sled. Scott's here. Come up from Baraboo with uh, Public Enemy and Red Sled. He's on that side. He's going to do the NEW stuff. Over here training me. We're going to make a test hook. It's what? 6.36? 7 o'clock start time. So we're going to make a test hook. Make sure everything is working on the speedboard and stuff. And we're going to get started. This is the first 26 diesel truck. Low street, I believe, is a technical term. NEW 13.5 pace at 9 miles an hour tonight. We changed our pace anywhere from 7 to 10, I believe.
cool looking old school cab over. Morning folks, Saturday morning. We've been out uh, checking things over for today. I sure do like that I can drive I can both sleds and just drive them in when I get home and we got our bird in here. Darn birds keep coming in here. Anyways, we've got uh, Mike at a Says he had a good night in O'Connell. He was home before we were. But I just went through, checked everything over. Uh, we're gonna be leaving for Baraboo here. Or I am, I should say. I'm gonna go down, uh, a couple things I gotta take care of on Scott's red sled. He was up in uh, Greenleaf last night. Uh, a couple minor things I'm gonna take care of for him today. So I'm gonna leave a little early, go take care of that stuff. They do have some rain in the forecast. Looks like it, uh, it could possibly break up, so that'd be good. Let's hope so. Uh, today's uh, from my first Badger State pull, and it's for their benefit for the Children's Hospital. They raise quite a bit of money every year to donate to the Children's Hospital, so which is a pretty neat deal. So hopefully the rain holds off and we can get a good show in. So I'm gonna get on the road and we'll catch up with you guys again later. So here we are, Baraboo, Wisconsin, Badger State. American Family Children's Hospital benefit pool. A lot of people here, lots of here. Big tractor here for now. Make some test hooks with it. Been a lot of rain. So, yeah, the track's wet. <laughs> Making the best I can out of it. Uh, we're getting, we're gonna get started about an hour late here, but it is what it is, Mother Nature. Gave us a pretty good shot of rain, so. I probably won't do much videoing tonight because I get pretty nervous at these big shows. So we'll probably catch back up when we get done or tomorrow morning. So I just got down to first class of uh, limited pro diesel trucks. And they got duels on the back and no fenders on some of them. I don't know if you can tell, but my windshield's awfully dirty and they throw all the mud on the sled. It's a mess. <laughs> it's definitely wet. Last night was dry. Tonight it's wet. Well folks, it's Monday now. I didn't take any video yesterday. Uh, the weekend went pretty good. Friday night, uh, I didn't spend much time in the sled, so I got a couple different shots for you, track side and that. And then Saturday, it was wet. It rained before showtime. Still pretty good turnout for the, for the benefit pull for the children's hospital. So hopefully I raised quite a bit of money for the children at the children's hospital. I didn't get much video there either. Uh, big polls like that, I get pretty nervous and watch what I'm doing. So I didn't spend much time videoing. So hope you, hopefully you guys enjoy the videos. I got a few uh, compliments on what we're doing. People like it. So if you do, make sure you subscribe to the page and hit the thumbs up button to like the, like the videos. And make sure to share it with your friends. See if we can get a few more subscribers. And we'll catch you next time.